Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about interview questions. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, when a software engineer interviewer asks how would you debug a production issue, what are they trying to evaluate? Well, they are trying to figure out what your thought process is. They're trying to figure out how you go about solving your issues within the production environments. Yeah. They want you to talk as much as possible and the better you are at transferring your personal process the clearer their picture of you is going to be. This is the best questions at, or the, the archetype of type of questions that I use to basically figure out how uh, how good someone knows their craft. It is the best question, hands down, nothing beats it. Because it's a question where you cannot fake the answer. You are not going to be able to answer this question uh, uh, and try to trick someone who knows all of these sorts of things into believing that you are better than you are. The are only There's usually only two ways that you, uh, you this, this thing ends up. Either you give a very bad explanation, a very hacky one, and this is exactly what you're looking for uh, as the interviewer. You're looking for if, it, let's say that you have tried to convince us that you are a senior software developer, and your answer is, oh well, uh, yeah, but uh, I add some log statements and then I might, you know, and then you go really vague on how you do it, like, oh, I add some log statements and then like if there's something in uh, like the output in the environment then I can figure out from that you know you you don't get a straight answer from the person they can't just actually tell you what they do that is a bullshit answer given to you by someone who is shit at their job or at the very least really bad with communication and you ask you should uh, asking more of these questions of course to trying to see uh, if you ever get a straight answer guys I have done hundreds at uh, this point of interviews where people do this where you ask them such a question where there is no wrong answer it's just you trying to explain your process but the problem is that when you're dealing with someone who doesn't really know how to do this well they don't really have any thoughts about it. This is this is an incompetent person, and the incompetence is shown when you try to explain how you do your job to somebody else, and especially when you're dealing with someone who actually knows how to do it as well. Which, of course, adds pressures and so forth. But this is like the best way we can interview people at this point. But the good part is that when people know sort of how and they, they do this on a regular basis, the person who doesn't know anything won't be able to answer the question. And that's what that's the you I mean if you do, if you can't even give me a straight answer yeah you're out of the, yeah you're never gonna get the job never but a junior might say something uh, that which shows sort of their level of understanding of how to do things mid level sounds there in a different way where like they might add more steps and like a, they, because they have a bigger scope of understanding they have more experience so they can sort of you know they can reason about more things and then there's really really senior level people like they have a different way of answering that question. It's different level. If that makes it, it's sort of it's sort of where you 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 can figure out based on the way that they explain how they go about it, how much living have they actually done? How much have they seen? A very shallow understanding often means a very short a shorter answer, without a lot of diff without a lot of thought given to uh, to like what could be going on, whereas a lot of experience basically it comes uh, in the format of fairly concise uh, like uh, explanations of what you would do and then sort of you might go and uh, actually ask some follow-up questions related to like a production issue well it sort of depends on what my setup is uh, do I have like uh, a rollback option uh, do I have a logging system, do I have some type of automated testing, etc. You can kind of go through like the whole list of all the sort of quality checks a person might have in a depending on what level of uh, development we're doing here because I mean just saying with production issue might be a little bit vague so you might go a little bit specific depending on the type of application you have right but uh, I hope that that makes sense to you because a person who really knows their stuff and have done a lot of stuff will we'll start mentioning things that are relevant 
they will talk about CI pipelines or logging systems or rollback options. Do you, how do you do deployment? Is there feature flagging involved? Unit testing, etc. Cetera, et cetera. There are all of these sort of methods that one might use. I mean, or do you have? Can I SSH into a box? Like, am I running a VM? Is it in a container? Am I running a Lambda function, etc.? So that you're already like you, by just saying these words, you're immediately if, if, like as the interviewer hearing that, oh, okay, this is the stuff that this person has exposure to, because these are relevant topics to consider when answering this question. But with the person who doesn't really know all that much usually they don't say much or it's going to be super vague because they really don't know they try to pretend that they know but someone who really knows it will actually just yeah i'm uh, probably going to shake this that etc etc and so that is the thing that they're looking for and this is why i love this sort of question it's almost the i, I would go as far as to say that every single software hiring process should involve these sorts of questions together with experienced software developers within the company there is no better way to hire professional grade software developers because no one will be able to answer this question to the satisfaction of the interviewer without uh, assuming now that the interviewer actually knows something about software development without giving away their skill level and so making an assessment which is the intention of this of sort of which level you are on and if that stands into you know if that does that match line up with what you claim like the role that we're hiring for and like what our expectation is of you well then you're yeah then there's not going to be an issue because uh, so i mean juniors uh, seniors and mid levels no, if you, I, I love to just mention to people before I ask this sort of question that there is no wrong answer. There's no. We're just trying to put you on a gauge. Roughly, where are you? And because this is much better, in my opinion, than giving people like really hard, odd, like trick questions about computer science, where that doesn't really matter all that much uh, on an average day. But how to do this? Well, this is basic. This could be your first day. Your first day could literally be that there's a production issue. How do you solve it? And then just put someone because then you don't create a pass fail situation. You only create like a like a slider, like a, a gauge. Where where on the scale are you? And that's it. And I love that. I think this is great. It's m less stressful for the candidates, and it is actually more useful to the company. So what I want you to take away from this is that if somebody asks you how to how you debug a production issue or how you set up a CI pipeline, how do you do testing, and these sorts of open questions, what they're looking for is your thought process. How do you think about this? How do you usually do things so that you can walk them through sort of how you would think about these sorts of problems? And this is one of those things that I've told you guys about where soft skill really matters in communication. If you if you freeze up in an interview and you're not really able to communicate effectively in an open and transparent way in this situation, it becomes really hard for the interviewer to figure out what's going on. As I said, with the person who can't really who gives like really vague answers, the problem is that if you you give vague answers it can mean that you're incompetent but it can also mean that you're just very shy and like you don't really you don't you, don't, you can't really communicate but at the end of the day I as the interviewer I have to be able to put you somewhere and if you never give me a satisfying an answer to like how you do the thing how will I know if you actually know anything and if that's because of nerves or something, I can't really, you know, I'm human too. I can't really figure that out for you. You, you, you really have to work on that part. But if you are very communicative in this situation and you kind of just go transparent and say, well, I would probably do something silly to begin with. Maybe a few console logs or maybe I have a debugger, depending on the type of production issue we have now, right? I will go to the website maybe and click around a little bit and see like if I could recreate the issue and when I could recreate it I could check is there is this a, like a JavaScript error or is it happening on the back and where is the problem, right? And then I would take steps from there. If you can just sort of embrace the explanation and just like basically brain dump how you would do it almost pseudocode it in a sense, that is the best thing for you. And that is exactly what the interviewer wants. They want to figure out what your thought process is so that they can figure out if you actually know what you claim to know. And if the thing that you're applying for the role, if you are the, a match for that sort of skill level, at least from their perspective, that's usually what it's about. Have a great day.